Yeah. The Abbott and Costello program, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the happy rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy songs of Connie Haynes. And with Halloween fast approaching, we remind you of the time Frankenstein met Dracula and said... Hey, Costello, where have you been? What? Where have you been? Oh, Why are you all dressed up tonight? Oh, well, but I just came from my cousin Corporal Hugo Costello's wedding. Oh, so your cousin Hugo finally got married, eh? Yeah. Who did he marry? Who did he marry? Yeah. He married a woman. <laughs> you dummy, of course he married a woman. Who ever heard of anybody marrying a man? My mother did. Oh, no. Talk sense. Did your uh, cousin Hugo have a military uh, wedding? It must have been. Her father was carrying a gun. Well... <laughs> Well, I hope Hugo will be very happy. I think he will have it. Marriage is so romantic. So Just think, his ration books, her ration books, yes. lying side by side on the kitchen table. Yes. That is... Side, side by is, side. Side by side. Ration books. That is romantic. Ration books side by side. Yes. That's the biggest hole I'm going to drill right here. All right, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Look. Look. All right, look, look. Look, by the way, who gave the right away, Costello? Huh? Who gave the right away? Well, uh, let me see. What page are you on? No, oh, never. <laughs> who gave the right away? That's what I said. <laughs> Don't you know? It's your own cousin. Oh, uh, nobody. Ah, uh, nobody. No, I could have, but I cut my mouth shut. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, Costello, I mean, who let her down the aisle? Nobody let her. She knew the way blindfolded. <laughs> Look, Costello, somebody had to lead her down the aisle to meet her spouse. To meet her what? <laughs> to meet her spouse. Hugo is the spouse. Are you lost now? No, no, no. No, no, no don't you understand? A spouse. Her, her spouse. Now, just a minute. Now, wait I got it. Now. Just a minute. Hugo is her spouse. You can't call Uncle Hugo a spouse. He never touches the stuff. No, no, I don't. Okay, okay. Then we'll say Hugo was the groom. That's better. He was a groom before he got married, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. How could he be the groom before he got married? He took care of the general's horse. I, oh, <laughs> well, skip it. Okay. Uh, how, never mind. <laughs> look, uh, how did the bride look, Costello? Was she wearing a corsage? Abbott, how can you ask me such a thing? I'm only a young boy. Oh, now, look. I'm only asking you... I'm only asking you if the bride wore a corsage. No, with her shape, she didn't need one. No. Look, Costello, you saw the bride, didn't you? Sure. Well, what kind of clothes did she wear? Oh, she had a beautiful torso. Torso? Yep. Every bride has to have a torso. Uh, no, 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 Costello. You mean uh, trousseau. Did you uh, see her trousseau? He wasn't there. No. <laughs> Who wasn't there? Robinson Trousseau. No, no. <laughs> Listen, Costello. You're the... talking like a kid. No, I'm not talking that way. Listen, I'll explain it to you. When the bride came into the church, did you notice her train? What train? She drove up in a second-hand Plymouth. No, no. <laughs> I'm talking about the train on her dress. Now, with every bridal dress, you get a train. What store is giving those away? I bought a suit once. I got a baseball bat and a catcher's mitt, but I never got a train. No, 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 Costello. <laughs> All right, no, 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 no. Will you please listen? What a joke. Yes, when the... Look, when the... When the bride walked into the church... Now, listen to me, please. When the bride walked into the church, was she dragging anything behind her? Yeah, my cousin Hugo. I... Uh, no, no. I'm talking about her dress. Did you see that long, white piece of goods hanging from her dress? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Well, that was her train. That was her train? Yeah. I stripped over that thing and tore it off. You tore off her train? Yep. How did the bride look without a train? She looked like a late freight with a loose caboose. <laughs> Costello, you're not fit to talk to an idiot. Okay, then I'll have to write your note. Costello, will you shut up? All right, all right. Shut up. Now, I have a definite reason for wanting to know about this wedding. Now, listen to me, please. I'm still thinking about your $75 that we have in the bank. Yeah. Now, we're going to make that money. Will you listen to me, please? Turn around here. Go ahead. All right, now we're going to take that money. Look at you? Yes. (laughs) We're going to take that money and open a matrimonial agency. I'm going to open up a matrimonial That's agency. what we're going not to do. Not me, Abbott. Why I not? ain't going to be responsible for sticking guys with mother-in-laws. Oh, what's not wrong? Not me. What's wrong with mother-in-laws? You know, you know what a mother-in-law is? Yes. A mother-in-law is the Gestapo with bloomers. Now, <laughs> but Costello, think, think what a wonderful thing it would be to bring people together. Why, marriage is a wonderful thing. Maybe, but I don't like the part where they throw the rice. 
They threw rice at my cousin Hugo today. Yes. And it's too messy. Oh, come, come, come. It's too messy. Rice isn't messy. It is messy when it's mixed with chop suey. <laughs> oh, nonsense. Weddings are beautiful. Don't you like the old-fashioned unions? No, they itch me all over. No. Cut that out. Please. Your underwear doesn't fit our conversation. My under underwear will fit anything. <laughs> My underwear will fit anything except me. All right, look. Where that. am I? I, I don't know where you're at. Costello, there's no use arguing. I've, I've made up your mind. Well, you always do. Now, look, here. We're going to take your $75 and open a matrimonial agency. Now, look. You know, we can make a fortune by uniting people in bonds of matrimony. The bonds of matrimony? Sure. Are they anything like war bonds? No, matrimony has nothing to do with war. That ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> and besides, Abbott, where are we going to get any customers? A guy has to be making a lot of money nowadays in order to get married. Oh, that's ridiculous. Do you know what I, I was getting when I was married? Do I know what you was getting when you got married? Yes. <laughs> no, and I'll bet you didn't either. No, I didn't. I, get out of here. In Saipan, one Marine says to another, Hey, Joe, you got a camel? And his pal says, Sure, and hands him one. The same thing happens on an aircraft carrier off the Philippines and in the fighting beyond Aachen. And then, too, people at home are smoking more than ever before. Though, unfortunately and unavoidably, there will be times when your dealer has to say to you, Sorry, no camels today when you ask for them. But remember this. Camel's kind, cool, throat-easy mildness and camel's rich, full, fresh flavor make camels worth asking for again the very next time you buy cigarettes. T-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. Inspired by Lou Costello's matrimonial venture, Freddie Rich and his musical matchmakers play The Very Thought of You, featuring the trumpet of Paul Guile. Matrimonial agency. Everything is laying around the office here. Yeah. Look, Evan. What? Who painted our names on those office doors? I did. You did? Huh? You, you see, on my door it says uh, Bud Abbott, senior partner, and your door it says uh, Lou Costello, junior. I don't like the way you spell junior. What do you mean? J A N I T O R. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to clean up in this business. Oh. Oh, come on, Costello. Answer the phone. It might be a reply to the matrimonial ad that I put in the papers this morning. Hello, hello, hello. Abbott and 
Catherine Costello's matrimonial agency. If you furnish the money, we'll get you a honey. Say, do you think you could find me a wife? You see, I've got to have a wife. I've got two million dollars. I'll give the girl a million dollars, and I'll give you a million dollars for your fee. A million dollars for me? Oh, boy! Come right over to the office. I can't come over. They won't let me out of here. But I'm all right, I tell you. I'm all right. <laughs> hey, Abbott, what? what paper did you put that ad in? The uh, Hardware Journal. I thought so. One of the nuts just called up. I'm looking for a man. I've got to have a man. I must have a man. I tell you, I must have a man. Lady, put me down! <laughs> uh, just a minute, miss. What can we do for you? my life, I've been looking for the ideal man, and at last I found him. I love this little fat boy. <laughs> oh, speak to me, my chubby little Romeo. Tell me that you love me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Why don't you say something? I can't. You're standing on my chest. <laughs> Get it up! Oh, you wonderful man. Take me in your arms, my little fat boy, and say... <laughs> Say that I am beautiful. Go ahead, say it. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, please, please say it. Say that I am beautiful. Okay. I am beautiful. <laughs> uh, look, yeah, ma I am to say look it. madam, we'll find a husband. Look, we'll find a husband if you'll just uh, answer a few questions. Now, have you ever been married before? Oh, yes. I was happily married for 15 years, but seven years ago, my husband disappeared. I'm afraid the poor man is dead. Costello, mm. just look at this poor woman. Yeah. Her husband is dead. I am looking at her. He isn't dead. He's hiding. <laughs> now get her out of here, Abbott. Look, Abbott, please. What kind of a business did you get me into? First a crazy, crazy guy calls up, and then a dame tries to run away with me. I'm going back to my old racket, raising pigs. Raising pigs? Yes, sir. I buy pigs in the fall for two dollars. I fatten them up and sell them in the spring for two dollars. Wait, uh, wait a minute. Uh, you buy pigs in the fall for two dollars and sure. you sell them in the spring for two dollars? Sure. Well, you can't make any money that way. No, but I have the use of the pigs all winter. I do. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is probably another customer. Come in. <laughs> well, it's our friend Kissel. Oh, well. So what brought you here? Well, I heard that you two kiddies were in the matrimonial business, so I left Chicago and I came out here on a greyhound. You came out here on a greyhound? Yes. How did you ever stay on his back? <laughs> How did I stay on his back? <laughs> all right, all right, I know, you don't like it. I like it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, look, we're very busy, kids. What's on your mind? Well, I would like to have the catering concessions for your wedding banquet. Because I'm serving the finest food and drink who money can buy. You know, for instance, just look at this bottle of genuine French champagne. That don't look like French champagne to me. Oh, t -t 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 now don't look like French champagne to him. There is the name right on the bottle here. Lucky Laguerre. What's that? Lucky Laguerre. Lucky Laguerre? Yeah. That's Lucky Lager. <laughs> Lucky Lager! <laughs> Some foam, huh, kids? <laughs> uh, just a minute, Kitzel. How much do you charge to put on these wedding banquets? Well, I don't like to disturb you, but I got two prices for banquets. Yeah, five dollars and ten dollars. For five dollars, I throw in the dessert. And for ten dollars? Ooh, for ten dollars, I carry it in. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have here a sample of my most delicious dessert. It's called Policeman Cookies. Policeman cookies? Yeah, cupcakes. <laughs> I suppose you also make affectionate pie. Affectionate pie? That's, That's where, where the, the top crust is stuck, stuck on, on the bottom, bottom one. Uh, That's my line. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, Costello, look, will you please cut it out? Kissel is just trying to make an honest living. Yeah. That's right, gentlemen, because, you know, I got a very big family to support. Would you believe that right now I got living in my house Uncle Willie and Tilly and a loafer named Billy, Terrence and Clarence and all my wife's parents, Louie and Fred, they sleep under the bed, Joe and Flo, and on the back porch there's Moo. Not to mention... Bert, Merton, the two-year-old squirt, Annie and Fanny are sleeping with Granny, Mike and two tramps are doubling with Gramps, and old Uncle Avery is sleeping with Baby... It's crowded in more. <laughs> and the possible things.
song for the Abbott and Costello Matrimonial Bureau, our singing star, Connie Haynes, suggests it had to be you. Bring it out there, Connie. It had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around and finally found somebody who could make me be blue, could make me be true, and even be glad just to be sad thinking of you. Some others I've seen might never be me. Might never be crossed. I try to be bored, but they wouldn't do for nobody else. Gave me a thrill with all your faults. I love you still. It had to be you, wonderful you. It had to be you. microphone tonight. Maybe you saw his picture on the back cover of this week's Collier's. It's also in Life magazine coming out tomorrow. However, he can't be here because right now he's probably somewhere over the Himalaya Mountains between India and China, flying one of Pan American's big planes. His name is Captain Charles Sharkey, and he's flown over 1,900 hours on that zero-infested run. After a 10-hour stretch in the cockpit of a DC-53, he says, nothing tastes so good as a camel. They're mild and cool, and the flavor swell. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. Come in. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm from the Marriage License Bureau. Mr. Costello, do you understand the laws governing marriage? I do. And Mr. Rabbit, do you understand the marriage laws? I do. Very well. I now pronounce you man and wife. Five dollars, please. Hey, this is a fine business, Abbott. I can't, can't understand why we haven't got any customers coming in. I put an ad in the paper this morning. How did the ad read? I don't know. Freddie Rich probably can tell you better than me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. The ad said, gentlemen with bottle of olives would like to meet a lady with a pint of gin. Object? Martinis. Oh. <laughs> now, you silly dope, not martinis, matrimony. Well, hello, fellas. How's the new matrimonial agency? Well, it's Ken Niles. Yeah, I just dropped over to bring you some business. I have a little niece at home, and she's dying to marry Lou Costello. Oh, why does everybody want to marry me? Sometimes I wish I wasn't so young and beautiful. And all right, boy, all right, look, uh, look. and charming, yeah, I know and debonair. Yeah, we know that. And petite. Yeah, they're petite, yeah. In French, patoot. Patoot, all right. <laughs> In Scotch, petite. Petite, all right, look. In Irish, potato. Well, let it go with that. Look. I got no more. All right, well, let it go. Look, Costello, Niles' idea sounds like a good proposition. Now, has your niece got any money, Ken? Oh, yes. She inherited a very fat dowry from her mother. We don't care about her sheep. Has she got any money? <laughs> How dare you ask such a question, Costello? She is a Niles. I'll have you know, we Niles are a proud lot. You Niles are a vacant lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Costello. 
Hey, look, are you really serious, Ken, about your niece wanting to marry Costello? Oh, yes, I am. Just last night, my little niece was sitting on the floor playing with her toys, and she looked up at me and said, that Lou Costello is the sweetest boy, and I'd like to marry him. Oh, now, isn't that cute? How old is she? At 57. <laughs> but uh, look, Ken, Costello doesn't want to get married, uh, but we'll be glad to find a husband for your niece. Oh, that's wonderful, but she's right out in the waiting room. Shall I bring her in? You better wheel her in. Oh, Poinciana. Or roll her in. Poinciana, will you step in here? Here she comes on the run. She don't run very good. Maybe she needs a grease job. Quiet, Costello. Uh, how do you do, Miss... Her uh... full name is Poinciana Pigeon hyphen Pigeon. Uh, what's the hyphen for? That's for the pigeon to sit on. Uh, Miss Pigeon, I'm sure that we can find you an ideal husband. Now... If you'll just leave a hundred dollars deposit and one of your pictures... Oh, I'm afraid I haven't any pictures of myself. I did have some taken, but the photographer didn't develop the negative. He was probably afraid to go into the dark room, but I'm alone. <laughs> uh, don't pay any attention to Costello, Miss Pigeon. Uh, just sign the contract here and, and let us have your check. Not so fast. Before I give you any money, you'll have to prove to me that your marriages are successful. I'd like to see a happily married couple. Who wouldn't? I uh, have... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's uh, just joking. You keep quiet, you mug. <clears throat> uh, he's joking. Now, Miss uh, Pigeon, if you come to my house at 8 o'clock this evening, I will show you a happy family. Myself, my wife, and our little boy. Oh, this is so thrilling. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. Abbott, what did you tell that woman? You haven't got no little boy. Costello, we're going to put this deal over. Now, I'm going to give your kid brother, Sebastian, 50 cents to pretend that he's my son. If you get Sebastian into this thing... You're asking for trouble, Abbott. He's a pretty nasty little brat. How dare you say that about your own brother? How dare me say that about my own brother? Yes. Because I'm going to play both parts. <laughs> well, Abbott, I bring my little kid brother Sebastian over to play the part of your son. Yeah, but I ain't going to do it. Sebastian, you'll do as you are told. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. High score. Uh-oh. Now, there, there's Miss Pigeon now. Sebastian, uh, you answer the door, and I'll go in the kitchen and get Mrs. Abbott. Well, good evening, little boy. I'm Miss Pigeon. Hi, Miss Pigeon. Oh, hi, boys. Hi, Miss Pigeon. Pull up a perch and sit down. Spread your feathers. My, what a quaint little fellow. I just love little boys like you. I wish I had 14 little boys, and I wish every one of them was just like you. You want 14 kids just like me? Yes. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> oh, how cute. Now, tell me, my little man, where are your father and mother? Ah, uh, they're out in the kitchen passing time. Passing the time? Yeah, they're throwing the clock at each other. <laughs> now, 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 Sebastian, behave yourself. Oh, good evening, Miss Pigeon. I, I want you to meet my lovely little wife. Come in here, Snowflake. Coming, Shaky. <laughs> my, what a happy little family. Mrs. Abbott, do you do your own cooking? Oh, yes. I was just out in the kitchen baking some biscuits. Buddy simply loves them. Wouldn't you like to sink your teeth into another one, dear? No, he'd like to get his teeth out of the last one. <laughs> little Sebastian. He's always joking. I'll kill that kid. <laughs> Miss Pigeon, won't you stay for dinner? Here, let me take your coat. Oh, no, 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 Snowflake, dear. <laughs> that coat is too heavy for my itty-bitty you. Let me take it, Snowflake, dear. Oh, Mr. Abbott, you and your wife are such a lovely couple. I decided to let your matrimonial agency get me a husband. If you'll get me the pen and ink, I'll make out the check. I'll get the pen and ink. Oh, no, 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 Snowflake, darling. <laughs> You get the pen. I'll carry the ink. I don't want you to tire your itty-bitty army. I'll help, too. I'll help, too. I'll carry the blotter. We'll be right back. Oh, my. I've never seen such a devoted couple. You're a lucky little boy, Sebastian. They have such a wonderful father and mother. Are they always this kind to each other? Oh, yes. Did you see the lovely upsweep hairdo my mother was wearing? My daddy gave it to her. Oh, now, how could he give her an upsweep hairdo? He hit her on the head with a broom. <laughs> oh, you're so quaint. And he's always buying her presents, too, my mother. Only this morning, he went downtown and bought her a beautiful present, a nice new shotgun. Does your mother know your daddy bought her a shotgun? No, it's a 
surprise. She don't even know she's going to shoot her, and he's going to shoot her. <laughs> Somebody's going to get shot. A shotgun? Oh, my, he's going to shoot her. Oh, this is terrible. You people are nothing but idiots. I'm getting out of here. What happened, Sebastian? Where's Miss Pigeon Pigeon? Pigeon Pigeon just flew to Coop Coop. <laughs> what did you say to her? I just told her I said... Uh, uh, the high voice. Oh, yes. Uh. <laughs> I told her. I just told her to get the guy. I told her to gag about the shotgun. Oh, uh, why, Jimmy Coopard? <laughs> Come here, Costello. It's about time. It's about time to teach this kid brother of yours a lesson. He... He just cost us a hundred dollars. Do you know that? I'll talk to him, Bob. That a boy. Now, Sebastian, I don't know why I have to speak to you all the time. Every time I get a chance to become a big business maggot, you always have to gum up. (laughs) That's what it says. You always have to gum up the works. I'm sorry, Louie. Anybody would think the least you could do is to lend a helping hand to your own brother. I'm sorry, Louie. But instead, you continually hold up to ridicule and put big blotches on my escutcheon. Don't stand there, Sebastian. Say something. Oh, I'm a bad boy. Abbott and Costello will be back with you in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute Corporal Robert H. True of Denver, Colorado, right waist gunner on a Liberator bomber for his heroism in rescuing a combat crew member enveloped in flaming gasoline. In your honor, Corporal True, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Each of the three Camel Radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million Camels sent free each week. In this country, the Camel caravans traveling from camp to camp have thanked audiences of more than 4 million Yanks with free shows and free Camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud and Lou back for a few final words. Thanks, Ken. And all we want to say, folks, is buy bonds. Buy plenty of them. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, try camels on your throat and your face. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. Somewhere right now, a man who's had a hard day is sitting in a soft, easy chair, ready to relax as he packs his pipe. He takes a certain famous red package out of his pocket. His nostrils thrill to the rich aroma of fresh tobacco. His fingers notice how firm it packs in his pipe bowl. He lights a match and... Ah, what a fragrance. What a flavor, too. Mellow and full-bodied, but mild and so tongue-gentle. Someone near him says, say, that smells good. What are you smoking? And he says, what I always smoke, Prince Albert. Well, that man is really millions of men all over the map because more men smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole wide world. And price as well as pleasure is one of the reasons, for there are around 50 thrifty pipe pulls in one regular two-ounce package. Start on P.A. today. <laughs> Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes was directed by Dick Mack, and this is Ken Niles wishing you a pleasant good night from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.